Nobody ever shows love to our fluffy dude Flareon, and it sits at the very bottom of competitive usage. But he's got some firepower stat-wise with base 130 attack and decent special bulk, but other than that it's pretty lacking. The good news is that it can be better than people think with its ability Guts, which boosts attack by 50% when status. We pop a Toxic Orb to get Guts active and pair that with Facade which becomes a 140 power normal move, and we can even boost this further with Terra Normal. To help with our slow boy, we can actually run Flame Charge to boost our speed by one stage, and once we're zooming, nothing wants to live attacks including Stab Flare Blitz. Flareon is tired of the disrespect, and this thing can finally be a beast. Alright, so Flareon feels like one of the most neglected evolutions, but today, it's finally time to show some love to the little fella. If you're into that kind of thing, you should consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and if you'd like to see some less popular competitive Pokemon being used, I promise you probably won't regret it. So, with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent's gonna go ahead and start things off by leading Dragapult. I kinda didn't really expect that, and as I'm gonna lead off with the Cleaver, I figure, you know, I'm Choice Scarf, I can outspeed this thing, and see, you know, I'm here to chop some stuff up and lay down some rocks. So I can do both at the same time by going for the Stone Axe, however, that 90% is an absolute lie, because does that move ever hit for anybody? Probably not. And what's even worse than a little bit of salt in the wound is that this thing has a Hydro Pump for some reason, and that just straight up knocks me out. And now not only do I lose my fast cleaver who was looking nice here, but also now I don't have stealth rock up. So going down 5-6 right from the first turn is <laughs> always satisfying. Now, at least I can get myself a little bit of momentum here. I can go into the Guard of War because I figure, you know, they're probably not going to stay in here. And predicting the switch, I can actually go for the teleport. Now, the Guard of War is one of the only Pokemon with teleport access. And it's actually pretty good for positioning, especially with this team, because as you're going to see, as they switch into the Arachmanid, who, you know, can take special attacks pretty nicely. Gardevoir is like, I'm actually, I'm a head out. I teleport, which now allows me to switch into whatever I like against the big spider, and it's feeling like a pretty good time to go into the Flareon. So, you know, ordinarily big spider, big water spider, not ideal. However, this Flareon has different ideas. Also, the main reason why we're trying to run some, you know, pivot with things like that teleport is because I come in, immediately get that Toxic Orb to activate, and now it's time to get some Flareon shenanigans going straight off the bat. So, I'm going to go for the Terra here just to get that Terra normal. I want to have as much damage from facades as possible. We've got the Guts active. And uh, Araquanid's not the kind of guy who enjoys taking physical attacks, really. Of course, its Water Bubble ability does reduce damage from fire moves if that's what I decide to go for. But, I am iced out out here. I'm blinging so hard the Granny in the back has to put on sunglasses. And that actually just straight up takes care of the Araquanid, which is great because that thing was probably there to... You know, not only hit really hard with water bo bubble, water booble, <laughs> boosted liquidations, but also now they can't set up their sticky web. So that feels pretty good. And on the empty switch, they decide now to go into Pelipper. So Toilet Bird obviously makes it rain. It's going to set that up for their Archaladon in the back, who can then now just fire off immediate Electro Shots. Problem about Pelipper is, even if this thing is defensive, guess what? I don't care how bulky your big-ass bill is, a facade with that Terra Normal boost definitely is enough to take care of the Pelipper. So while that thing comes in and makes it rain, it now is just going to be dead. So likely has the Damp Rock, it's going to have that rain stick around for a while. And of course, while now, you know, Flare Blitzes are going to be dampened, we're still feeling pretty good with Flareon going on a little bit of a tear here. So the problem is I wasn't able to get any speed boost. And now, as Dragapult comes in, this boy is quick. He's got his ghostly tail flicking in the wind, and I do not want to be outsped here. So what I decided to do is just go right into the Gardevoir. It's more than likely they probably don't go for the Dragon move here, just expecting to switch in. But I don't really have much that wants to deal with uh, big old fast Dragon. So I come in, trace this dude's clear body once again for absolutely no reason at all, and they do go for the Hydro Pump, which is actually <laughs> kind of sucks because now it's boosted by the rain, which does do over half. And while I do have some good natural special defensive bulk on the Gardevoir, I'm more than likely not going to be able to t <laughs> take a Shadow Ball now. And of course, I do get out sped as I'm not Scarf, so they can just throw a nice little Shadow Ball at my face, and that is going to take care of the Gardevoir. So immediately after that sequence, I'm realizing, you know, I probably should have gone to, into just about anything else at this point, unless they went for that Dragon move, because now I really don't have much that wants to take an attack, you know, from the Pult. So I decide now to just go into the Noivern. So here's the thing. Dragapult is really bad for my team. Now, part of me kind of thought that that was Specs damage from the Hydro Pump, but then I realized after frisking it, it is in fact has an Eject Pack. So as they outspeed, they're able to go for the Draco Meteor and actually miss, which is the most clutch thing ever because now 
that allows the Noivern to go for the Tailwind. And uh, that is great because now I'm actually definitely faster. I kind of thought that also I was going to be speedier if this thing was a modest nature. It turns out Dragapult is literally broken and faster than everything. But what it's not faster than are these damn wings once we get flapping behind the old Tailwind. So I can now just drop a Draco on his ass and that actually takes care of the Pult. Which actually, it keeps us in the game and we got some, we got some work to do. So... We are now chilling behind the Tailwind, and this thing is supposed to be able to get an eject button to, you know, set up a Tailwind and then go right into the Flareon. However, as they go into the Archaladon, I can't really flamethrower this thing in the rain, and it's kind of a bad time. I do know, however, this thing is definitely going to Electro Shot, and at least knowing that that is coming, he's going to go into Bridge Mode, and then go right back into Stapler Remover Mode, but then gets that Special Attack Boost. And then it is immediately able to fire off the Electro Shot, obviously because of the rain. And I go into a little baby hamster. Now, Morpeko is... Morpeko? He's a, he's a fake-ass hungry Pikachu. I don't know. This thing's in here. He changes into dark mode. And uh, at this point, I have a couple different options. Now, I could consider parting shotting, but then I don't have anything to go into. They have two turns of rain left, which means they have two more immediate ones they can fire off. I decide to just go for the knockoff, which is going to be an interesting play because I want to get the chip on the thing, but also, of course, then I just give it a stamina boost. So I boost this thing's defense by one stage, but I do figure that if I can just get that bit of chip there, I can be in a position where now Flareon can potentially uh, be able to finish this thing off. So they do go for a second Electro Shot. This thing is broken as hell in rain, by the way. It is such an insane Pokemon. So it does finish off the hamster, and uh, that's what this hamster does. Comes in and dies, and he's spins around sometimes and runs on his little wheel but today I at least got rid of the leftovers and that's pretty good so I'm not super concerned about this Argelodon at this point the main reason is because I feel like with that chip I have as long as I don't give it another stamina I surely can finish it off you know with the Flareon as soon as I'm able to get a Tailwind up so as I decide to go into the Noivern here they're actually going to bust out the Terra they're probably trying to get a defensive Terra going here because of uh, you know Noivern kind of threatening it on the offensive side as they actually just go into the uh, Terra Flying. So, bust out the balloons like it's his damn birthday out here, and Noivern is not concerned about going to your birthday party. I decided to just go for the Tailwind, which is going to try to blow them balloons away, except they're attached to like a 10,000 pound bridge. So, this is going to allow this thing to fire off another Electro Shot. Honestly, again, I'm fine with that. Noivern at this point, is his goal is to come in, blow up and act like you don't know nobody, but also just die to an Electro Shot after getting the Tailwind up. Because... With those Tailwind turns, uh, Flareon can be in a spot where I'm faster than everything, and that is the goal. Try to get Flareon to do something. So, as it does finish me off, the turns align pretty nicely just because, of course, now the rain goes away, and it is time to see if the Flareon height can get some heat up in here. So, I go into the Diamond Boy, and at this point, uh, of course, since they tear it out of the Steel-type, I can actually just go for the Facade. Uh, I am, of course, speedy out here. And a facade is definitely going to be able to kill that thing, even with the plus one defense. And it turns out the Terra actually helped us out, which is good because now that means, you know, there's not going to be any surprise Terras in the back. So that takes care of the bridge. And we are, of course, taking that poison. One of the bad things about toxic orbs is you do get a bad poison, so it does stack over turns. Except Flareon's here to have a good time, not a long time. That's this guy's goal. So now they decide to switch into the Skarmory. So... Skarmory comes in, and I'm thinking, hmm, I have to touch this thing, I have to go for the Flare Blitz, which is going to absolutely obliterate the guy. Does, in fact, knock it down to Sturdy, however, which is quite bad, and that's why those Stealth Rocks missing that Stone Axe in the early game was extremely bad, because had this thing come in, had to take the Stealth Rock chip, it would have definitely died, and now this thing goes for a Roost, which is annoying because I take Rocky Helmet damage uh, along with, you know, Poison every turn, and while, of course, I can't finish this thing off, their final Pokemon, being the Garchomp, is going to present a kind of an interesting <laughs> endgame. So, of course, I know that I die to my Poison Recoil next turn anyway, but I just go for another Flare Blitz, and Flareon is out here just poking holes in teams, which is amazing. So, that takes care of the Flare, uh, the Skarmory, but we do end up knocking ourselves out like a damn captain on a ship. We're just going to go down with it, which is fine with me. So, Flareon down. Now, we're it's a 1v1, and... I probably could have prepared for this a little bit better. I was kind of hoping that uh, that Skarmory matchup was going to go differently, but it was obviously sturdy. So now I have a pair of Disco Balls versus a Garchomp, which is definitely kind of a wild matchup, right? Because this thing cannot hit me with any stab earthquakes. Its best damage would be with its, you know, Dragon Stab. So I decided to just go for the Will-O-Wisp. I figure 
uh, is kind of my best bet to be able to both take hits and start to whittle this thing down as they do have Swords Dance. I was really hoping it was going to be like a scale shot set with no Swords Dance would have been great. But as they dance with the swords, I'm going to go ahead and burn it. So I do not miss the Will-O-Wisp, which is at least good. And now we have a, a very interesting time. So here's the situation. My Weezing, this is kind of the worst matchup for Weezing. I have three coverage moves, and none of them hit this thing for even neutral. So the best I can do is to go for Stab Sludge Bombs and just hope that I can take attacks from this thing. So they decide to go for another Swords Dance. Brings it up to plus four. Uh, however, with the burn, I do know that I can definitely take attacks. And the bad news is, Weezing can't hit hit anything for shit. I can't sludge bomb my way out of a wet paper bag at this point. It's doing no damage. So, it now comes down to if Weezing can clutch this one out. They're actually going to Swords Dance up to plus six. Which is, you know, I, the best they can do. And I'm still feeling like with a burn on this thing, I can probably take a few attacks. The problem is, the, the freaking burn chip never stacks up to be enough. And as I do have this thing down to around half, we now get to see what their coverage is. So... They decide to go for the crunch. Crunch right on my balls, which hurts, but it doesn't get the defense drop, which is good. And as it does less than half, especially after some black sludge, it's looking like this is actually going to be a really close matchup, especially if I can grab a critical hit, I can definitely pull this out. So there's nothing else for me to do other than fire off sludge bombs. So they now decide to go for a liquidation. They're busting out all the coverage. Turns out they do not have the dragon claw. And as they do not get the defense drop, my Sludge Bomb is not quite going to be enough damage. Which is unfortunate because even after my Black Sludge, it's looking like it could be a potential roll on whether or not their next attack kills. And their highest damage by 5 points is going to be Liquidation over Crunch. They do go for one more Liquidation and that is going to take care of the Weezing. So, Weezing came out and choked it out here by not having the damn coverage, but it's honestly poor management on my side. And that was a very close game, however. So that's going to do it for that one. They squeak out the win, but Flareon still gets the win in our hearts. But if you thought we were done, you are definitely mistaken, because there are surely some more Flareon shenanigans to be had. And if you've made it this far into the video, you should probably hit that like button, because it definitely helps out, and I appreciate you. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. All right, so this time my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Golden Snitch. Gotta try to catch this thing and, I don't know, defeat Voldemort, whatever the hell it is. But regardless, I know that they do have the Zorark on their squad, and a lot of the time people will just kind of lead that as a bluff. So as I was, I just decided to go with the Cleaver. Um, I'm gonna opt to just go ahead and U-turn on this thing. I figure I can break this thing sturdy if it is gonna be that Walnut-ass Fortress and just do some good damage in general, and it does turn out to be the Zorark, so crazy tentacle weird head is floating around and at this point I, I know what this thing's working with so I have a few options to switch into here I decide to go into uh, the Noivern I'm kind of thinking that they maybe just go for the nasty plot it turns out as I give him a little inspection turn it's, it's freaking choice effects so he is in fact wearing glasses and they're just gonna fire off the shadow ball here so that is going to end up using up my eject button early. I probably should have gone into something different. I was reluctant to go into Gardevoir just in case of that Shadow Ball. I don't want to take too much chip there. And the eject button is now just going to drag my ass out into whatever I like. So that's kind of good because I can now choose a matchup. And I'm thinking I'm going to go into Hangry Ass Pikachu. And I do go right into Hangry Mode, which is going to make us full dark on our Aura Wheels. But I'm just going to click Knock Off because... We do have the benefit from the Frisk of knowing that this thing is, you know, choice specs, so it's just locked into Shadow Ball and they're definitely going to switch here. Now, I had the option to just go for the Parting Shot to try to even get another position, but I go for the knockoff just to get things rolling as they're actually going to bring in the actual Gold Snitch. And as the saying goes, snitches get stitches, and uh, as I take a little bite of whatever the hell that was, I hit him with a knockoff, which is at least, again, going to break that sturdy, so... That feels pretty nice at this point. Surely Buddy's going to just go for some type of hazards, whether it's going to be Stealth Rock or Spikes. So I can take this opportunity to just go for the Parting Shot, which covers for any potential switches, but also now, you know, anything can take a Gyro Ball, no problem. So I can go into whatever I like, and I feel like, you know what? There's never been a better time to bring in the Flareon. I, I go into this thing just because I can come in before the Stealth Rocks get set up, and before I Terra. Obviously, I don't want to take that big chunk of health from that, so... As I come in, they do go ahead and sprinkle some spikes around, which, again, I'm kind of fine with because I do have the Rapid Spinner in the form of the Morpego there. But at this point, this is actually is a good opportunity for me to go for a Flame Charge. Both because, of course, that thing is four times weak to it and it will kill it, um, but also it's going to give me that Speed Boost, and that is the type of activity Flareon needs if we want to get this fluffy-ass tail moving quick. So, as I go for that Flame Charge, they're actually going to switch into Politoed, 
who always looks like he's standing there at the edge of your bed telling mom that he threw up. But uh, obviously not going to do very much damage there with that, especially with now the drizzle up. I don't know why it always has to be freaking raining when I'm trying to use my fire guy, but uh, that's fine because all I needed was the, uh, was the speed boost from it regardless. And I can now go ahead and go full Flareon mode with that Terra Normal. I am going to be faster everything, than everything they have, barring you know Choice Scarfs. And uh, with this Terra Normal boost, not much wants to take a, a, fa a facade from this thing, especially when Guts are active. So, I am going to uh, bust out the facade and Politoed. All that's left of him are some weird green chunks around the weird-ass battlefield we're chilling on. It looks like we're playing, like, like this, this battlefield is crazy as hell, by the way. Anyway. That is nice because we're actually out here getting Flareon going. And with that speed boost, we're feeling pretty unstoppable out here. Which may be the first time anybody's ever said that about Flareon. So that's kind of fun. Now, as they decide to go into the Gardevoir, this is a common choice Scarf in. If they bring this thing in here, it means it is probably Scarf. And that means we're both at plus one and this thing's way naturally faster with them skinny ass legs. Good news is though, I can actually live the Moonblast. So while they do outspeed... I am able to live the power of the damn moon, and a facade just absolutely blast that thing into oblivion as well. So, Flareon is out here making a damn name for itself. And uh, I tell you what, one of the best things that ever happened to Gus users is this generation adding Terra Normal. It, literally, it helps so much. So, that takes care of that thing. I don't have to Flutter Blitz myself to death. And uh, as they now go into the Zorark, I'm thinking, you know what? I, I have one more hit left in me. And even though it's raining, a Guts boosted Flare Blitz definitely takes care of the Zorark there and that is going to be fun because now there's going to be no crazy illusion shenanigans but also um, that thing was fast and hits really hard and Flareon does knock itself out but again I've said it before we're here for a good time not a long time and the time was actually pretty good because we did in fact take care of half of their entire team so with that we're in a pretty good position here but there is still some shenanigans left we definitely have our work cut out for us because uh, they've got some crazy shit over there so he decides to go into the Mimikyu, and Mimikyu is one of the mons we're worried about just because of the fact that, of course, you know, this thing has that disguise. You're always going to have to touch it at least twice, pause. And as I come in, I do fr uh, frisk that life orb. So I figure this thing probably wants to go for a swords dance because that's what these crazy-ass fake Pikachus do. Freaking Pikaboo. And as I go for the flamethrower, I click that just to be able to break the disguise. And we get a little bit of chip with that, and it was good news that they did not shadow sneak us. However... That then allowed it to go for that Swords Dance. So, at this point, surely they're going to have the Shadow Sneak. If they don't, though, I can get up a Tailwind and be quick on some stuff. But instead, yeah, he just sneaks me, and that is going to take care of the Noivern. So, my goal at that point was basically just to be able to break that thing's disguise. And that's exactly what we needed. Because now, as I do still have my defensive wall in the form of Weezing left, we're hopefully going to be able to be a little bit better than against the damn Garchomp. So... I go into the Disco Balls and the party has officially started because I can now go for a Will-O-Wisp. I have the option to try to go for some Chip or go for the Will-O-Wisp. I figure I'm going to click the Willow miss I'm, not, I'm feeling risky today. I'm feeling, I'm feeling super risky as they go for that Shadow Claw. It does do a nice chunk of damage, but thank God we were able to cough up a Will-O-Wisp on his ass. And that is going to be super nice because now this thing's going to take Life Orb Chip. It's going to take Burn. And also now with that attack halved, it's going to be a whole lot easier to deal with because Mimikyu, whenever anybody has a Mimikyu in the back, it's such a it's such a momentum blocker that this thing, you just need to get through it. So now I know that I can take Shadow Claws super easy as long as they're not freaking critical hits. And Weezing is totally fine with that. We do not get crit there. And that allows me to fire off the Sludge Bomb, which feels like it would be going to be able to get close to a range where it was going to then kill it with the, uh, the burn. And... It does not. So I'm kind of left with a little bit of an interesting situation here. I feel like I've said that a lot, but these situations, sometimes they're interesting. All right, hear me out. So I want to conserve the wheezing. I feel like at the health that I'm at, I can definitely live like a mock punch from the Conkelder in the back. So I decide I can actually pretty freely go into the Morpico here, knowing that a Shadow Claw is coming, especially with this thing is burnt. I know that I can live it. And they do take a nice little slice out of my hamster. I don't know why everybody's so damn mean to my hamster. This thing's his tail is just painted on. He's just doing his best over here, for real. We're both a couple of fake-ass Pikachus, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But uh, that is actually going to knock that thing out with its Life Orb, and that is fun. It also does make me hangry, so I go into the Dark Mode, which is fine, because at this point, as they bring in the Conkelder, they have two Pokemon left. And Morpico is kind of just a sack here, because obviously 
you know, Mach Punch is something we are certainly worried about here, and Kunk Helder has that 100%, 110% of the time. So, obviously, I now just get punched, and that takes care of the Pico. So, I do have a few different answers for this Cinderblock carrying asshole clown, and as it gets its Flame Orb, it's going to activate its guts. Of course, I do still have the Gardevoir on the back, who is kind of my best way to stop this. So... As I go into the Gardevoir here, we're showing a little bit of leg, getting a little bit, little bit risque with it, but I do trace this thing's guts and be like, I am now the guts guy, which doesn't help me at all, but it's kind of fun. So, I decide, obviously, I have to go for a Moonblast. I'm kind of considering, they're, surely they're going to go for their Terra here if they have a defensive one, and I'm thinking, is Psychic going to be a better option if they go? It, regardless, I'm just going to throw the moon at this thing, and I know they're going to bust out a Terra. Sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it. I could have... Potentially gone for a switch here, but I'm just gonna straight up raw dog a moon blast pause and they do go for a Terra grass Which is good news because now at least moon blast will be neutral and I can get some type of chip off on this guy And that does a whole lot of damage, which is great So I get the special def or a special attack drop every single time I don't need it and that allows them to fire off the facade to finish me So there's just guts facades all over the damn place today and that is scary. So um, at least I did get some solid damage off on this guy. And I do have, basically, Weezing is kind of it, not a great matchup here. So I want to try to conserve that thing for the, their final Pokemon, which is the Fortress. So here's the plan. I can go into the Cleaver, and at full health here, I should be able to take a Mach Punch, barring a crit, even with this thing having its Guts Boost. So uh, it does go for that Mach Punch. Luckily, Cleaver is good for something, and we do, in fact... Uh, finish this thing off with the U-turn, which is great because it's now, you know, obviously weak to that U-turn being grass type with his cute little flower, and now he can enjoy his flower in the freaking underworld. So, uh, with the U-turn now, I can just go right into the Weezing, who is lucky I'm kind of saved it because I don't have much that could knock out that fortress, at least with the cleaver. However, yeah, Weezing has such damn bad breath that it turns out. But he breathes flames. It's spicy as hell. So all I really have to do is finish off the gold snitch, and we can come out of it on top. So they go into the fortress, but he's got his glasses on, and uh, I'm obviously just gonna click that flamethrower. I should be faster because fortress slow as hell. I mean, we're both a couple of weird orb slow fellas, but I do just go ahead and breathe some flames on him. That is gonna take care of the fortress and effectively be the end of the game. That was honestly a really close match. It, it kind of came down right down to it. And that was a really fun game. Shout out to you guys for watching. If you did stick around, thank you very much for the support. For I've been having so much fun making these videos, cooking up new teams always. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.